Uh, Minister, you are well aware of this situation. On the 14th of September, I sought a meeting with you and the key official involved in this issue. As of today, nobody has met with me, yet a private meeting took place last week with Deputy Tony McLaughlin, uh, at which he managed uh, to successfully return to the people of Sligo and tell them that they have to increase their property tax by 15%. Minister, the people of Fingal don't have to increase their property tax by 15%. Fingal have 100 million on deposit. There's no shortage of library services out there, which is the latest debacle in terms of the difficulty with a financial plan that's totally unworkable. I know in a recent parliamentary question you answered uh, that borrowing for a local authority is a reserve function. Well, that's a typical Sir Humphrey yes, Minister, get out of jail type clause when Section 106 of the Local Government Act says no, that's not the case, that the Department have to sanction said borrowing and satisfy themselves that that borrowing can be met. Now, the reality is, whatever many years later, Sligo has a debt of in and around 100 million, 100 to 120 million, uh, based on figures that supplied by your own department. Your county owes 600 million, but yet there's no library cuts down there. There's no library cuts in Dunleary. There's no library cuts, as I said, in Fingal County Council. So what kind of idiots do you take the people of Sligo to be? What do you think we are down there? Pure, stupid? We are equal citizens of this country. We are entitled to services. And the same mandate and votes that your Tony McLaughlin got are the ones that Deputy Kenny and I got. And those people are equal citizens. So don't throw us under the bus like the ECB and the EU Commission did to Ireland, because that's what precisely you and your officials are doing to the people of Sligo. And Sligo will not stand for it. And I am here today, and it will be again next week and the week after, to demand Anger. that the Minister make appropriate support available to Sligo local authority, who already, at the behest of your department, have no. cut staff by 42 per cent. That's 8.5 million out of the local economy. For what? For what? To satisfy yeah. officials in the department who, when I was a senator, refused to meet me, and since the 14th of September, Anger, have refused to meet me since. Now, that kind of democracy, Minister, looks to me a lot more Anger, like Anger, that Anger. practiced in the Reichstag or the Duma, Anger. but not Anger. one Anger. we should be Anger. standing over as new politics here this evening. Right. One minute this yeah. time, the, the, the reality on the ground is this plan was never workable. And we can hide behind the fact that uh, you say this wasn't ram down Sligo's throat as a plan that they had to adopt. He said a uh, surplus is a four million. You then read out 3.4, 3.1. I mean, what is the difference? Go back a few years when Donegal had something. Because you can't just take 65,000 people in Sligo and cast them aside. Nothing will take for the fact that last Wednesday you sent your deputy, Tony McLaughlin, and your councillor, Cahirna Tuber Cairn, back, back to Sligo and you said, put the property tax up. 50%. What is it next? Thank Will the deputy. people of Sligo be expected to pay more income Thank tax, specifically for their Thank local hospital, more car tax, specifically for the repair of their roads? I mean, Minister, get with Thank it. You, if this was happening in Cork, there'd be a revolution. Deputy but no, Kenny. it's little old Sligo. Little old Sligo, Thank he have just deputy. one deputy and 65,000 people, and we will not stand for it. So get used deputy to this deputy. kind of... Get used to this kind of robust debate you, because that is what's going to happen you, again and again and again so long Thank as you, you show continuing contempt for the people of Sligo.